hand it over to Ed Miltner. He's um, uh, the Idaho District Bridge Engineer with uh, FHWA. Please welcome Ed. Yeah, I'd like to echo uh, Matt's welcome. Welcome to Boise and uh, welcome to the City of Trees. You know, on behalf of the Idaho Division Office of Federal Highway, I'd like to welcome all the state DOTs, local agencies, our academia, and our industry partners, and everyone else here today. Whether it's your first time, your second, or your third time here in Boise, I hope you're able to take some time and go out and explore the downtown and, and the surrounding area. We've definitely grown, and uh, the growth continues, which is good for, for all of us in the bridge building business. I'm going to spend a couple minutes on talking about recent or relatively recent federal funding opportunities, specifically how those might tie to bridge preservation. People always ask about money, right? And money is necessary for everything we do, so I thought maybe that would be of interest to the group. And then, depending on time, I might hit on a couple things that are going on in the bridge preservation group with Federal Highway and Ashto's, uh, the expert task group. This is a little bit of old news, but the um, Back in November, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, IIJA, or what's also more commonly known as the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law, was signed into law. This is a five-year program, $550 billion, um, with the vast majority of that money dedicated for highway uh, bridge and uh, pavement. Out of that law, there were three bridge-specific programs. These are programs specifically targeted for and only for highway bridge. Two of them are formula programs. They're, the, they're listed there, the bridge formula program and then the bridge replacement and rehab program. And the third one is a discretionary program, which is the bridge investment program. I'll spend the next uh, few slides kind of talking about some of the high-level things with these. There are resources out there to explain them further. There's a lot of detail to them and certainly things to be aware of, but this is just gonna hit the highlights. So the first one, Bridge Formula Program, is probably the biggest one out there. It's a five, it goes with the five-year uh, authoriz authorizing law. It's a program that distributes funds by formula and its primary purpose is to reduce or eliminate poor and fair, uh, condition bridges and fair condition bridges or keep fair condition bridges from declining further and maybe even raise those back to a good, good condition. It's based on the uh, amount of poor and fair deck area you have in your state and also the cost to build in your state. Five and a half billion was appropriate, appropriated this past year for, across the country. The Western states, the 13 that are in this group received anywhere from at least 45 million up to greater than 500 million. Vast majority of the award or formula amounts were in the 40, or excuse me, in the below 100 to 150 million though. And funding is, a, is available for replacing, rehabbing, and preserving and protecting bridges. So preservation certainly is an eligible activity. All those things that we are gonna be talking about over the next couple days, this, these funds are available for that. There is a minimum set aside for off system, which is typically uh, local, local bridges, some of the local bridges. There are no match requirements. That's often uh, a challenge. And so on that particular classification of bridge, you can use up to 100% federal funds. Guidance was released on this in January. Um, that website, and these slides I believe will be available. That website will take you to a bunch of more information. There will be further appropriations over the next four fiscal years, next one coming in FY23. The next program is Bridge Replacement and Rehab. It's also a formula program, so funds, again, are distributed by formula based on poor condition. So there was what's called qualifying and non-qualifying states. Out of the 13 western states we have here, or represented in this group, most were qualifying. There were a few that were not qualifying, but the law was written in such a way that everybody got something. So again, the states that are represented in this group, the, the, the least amount awarded was about eight million and the highest amount was 34 million. I would expect that uh, we will see this program coming, or excuse me, I won't expect, there will be additional funds appropriated in the next four fiscal years. Guidance on this was released in May. That website would take you to some more details on it. And the priority with this is to replace and rehab poor condition and preserve and protect 
those that are fair or in good condition. And this last one is a discretionary program. So it's a little different than the first two in that it's not formula based, it's a discretionary one. The focus of it is to reduce the number of poor and prevent fair from becoming poor. That's the primary objective. There's a, several other objectives to it, but this one, this is the big one. It requires the submission of an application. You have to meet criteria on it. You have, to, you have to align your application with that criteria, and there will be a review process, and there will be awards made based on how many projects are submitted and how they align with the selection criteria. This particular year, $2.4 billion was appropriated to this program across the country. The notice of funding, which is a federal term, came out in June on this. There are three types of applications being accepted. There's the large bridge, which is stuff greater than 100 million in cost. There is the less than 100, or less than large, other than large, I believe, which is everything under 100 million. And there are planning project grants. Planning projects would be projects where you're not necessarily gonna move into a design or construction phase yet. You're really trying to develop something as a seed for a future design construction type project. That website has resources on it. We have quite a bit out on this. Um, there's a recorded webinar you can watch, Q&As, fact sheets, slides uh, explaining it further, application templates for the three different categories. I will say the planning deadline has passed, and the um, large bridge one, the actually, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, I, I'm probably gonna be the bearer of bad news here. The deadline is tonight at midnight, so that one's <laughs> not likely gonna happen. The, the last one, the one less than 100 million, the deadline on that is in early September. And I also would want to make a plug that this program is, a, is a, expected to be around for five years at least, maybe longer, who knows. But be ready for next year. It will come back around. Be thinking about projects and needs and look at the criteria this year. It may likely be similar next year because, again, these, these applications do take some time and effort to put together and they obviously don't happen. In, in a matter of hours. I'll hit two more quick things I wanted to touch on, which is some resources. So I'm getting off of funding now and on to kind of bridge preservation resources. I wanted to mention some great resources that the expert task group has developed over the years. This group consists of state, local, and federal partners, academia, and industry. And they're promoting the importance of bridge, bridge preservation. There's several pocket guides out there. These focus on improving construction quality and addressing common errors during construction. Many of you have probably seen these. If you haven't, these resources are out there. They're on the ASHO TSB2 website. QR codes have been added recently to these documents to make them smart or friendly for, or for your smart devices, phones and tablets used in the field, that sort of thing. And then uh, many of these, these are available free of cost. There's more stuff coming down the pipeline. There's several recent case studies, the most recent being cathodic protection to extend service life of bridges. We at Federal Highway are working on a project to develop a local, an example, local bridge preservation program. This will sort of highlight the challenges associated with an invent a bridge inventory size of maybe 50 to 100 bridges and how to implement or what conceivable ways to implement that and deal with things like cyclic and condition-based actions, rules for actions, different budget levels, life cycle costing, making performance measures, establishing and discussing benefits of actions, and then present scenarios that you may take based on your different resource levels. With that, I'd like to welcome you all to Boise and uh, look forward to talking to you and seeing some great stuff over the next couple of days. So thank you. The preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.